Hello. As Tisha, I want to extend my warmest congratulations to you all, our newest citizens of Ireland. These ceremonies were introduced by the government to acknowledge the honour and significance of attaining Irish citizenship. Today is also a celebration as you formally become part of the Irish family. As you know, my mum is Irish and my father is Indian. He's a doctor, she's a nurse, they met in England and married there. My sister was born there and still lives in London with her family and my family in India and America too. So my family's story, like yours, is very much defined by migration. And I believe migration has been good for Ireland. You citizens like you make our economy stronger, helping us to attract new jobs and investment, enable our public services to function, especially our health and social care services, and you enrich our society culturally. In recent years, we've welcomed new citizens from more than 180 countries. And every year, on the 17th of March at home and around the world, we celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And this is now your national holiday too. And I encourage you to take pride in celebrating your Irishness. I also encourage you to continue to celebrate the heritage and traditions that you bring with you. And in years to come, I hope you'll look back on today with immense pride. Gorgeous, Sloan, I was back. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. So today on this video, I'm going to be talking about one question that seems to be recurring quite often on my last video, which I posted on this channel that you guys got to watch about me talking about how I was recently able to secure an Irish citizenship. And a couple of you had asked me the question about how exactly the application process gets to work. And so I decided to put my thoughts together and create this video. Hopefully it will be helpful to someone out there. Take note, I am placing this disclaimer here. I am not an immigration officer. I keep saying that all the time on most of my videos because for some reason some people think I am kind of like a solicitor or someone with all of the information about Ireland but I am not guys. I am just sharing my own experiences and hopefully through some of the mistakes that I have gotten to make in the past a couple of you can learn a thing or through or two through my own story. Please do not mind my nails. They look like someone is trying to shovel the life out of them right now but anyways guys so basically there are two major ways to get the irish citizenship the first one being by birth or descent from your irish parents grandparents or great grandparents the second way is through naturalization which is the route through which i have decided to go through now this process is open to every foreign national who has lived in the country for some certain number of years of course there are some criteria that you will need to meet criteria such as you must be 18 years or older and if you are less than 18 years old you should be married i don't know exactly what that means but that is exactly how it's stated on the form online the second one is that you should be legally resident in the country for at least five years the third one being that you should have a good character which of course has to do with your criminal records and the fourth one is that you should intend to stay in the country after gaining citizenship now I do not know exactly how many people get to abide by that one but it is one of the rules online being an Irish citizen by naturalization is a privilege not a right the cost of the application process is 175 euro you'll be required to download read and fill forms of 36 pages with sections containing questions about your personal information um, questions about your identification residential addresses everywhere you have lived your entire life you also required to print out a form which is called the residency calculator checker that shows the number of years that you have lived in the country showing that you qualify to actually claim citizenship in the country by the number of years that you have lived in it your family status and relationship everybody in your family you're supposed to write them out so that if you ever feel like you want to invite them into the country then you have a more authentic form to show that you are related to them there's a tricky question in section six where you're asked about residence fully naturalization now i feel like this question is tricky because you are expected to state if you intend to stay in the country or move to another country after receiving citizenship in the country and also state the country that you intend to move to so it has a yes if you decide to stay in the country or no if you intend to move to another country and i'm wondering how many people exactly will want to say that no i am moving to so 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 and so country it felt like it's kind of 
feels like you are reducing your chances to get the citizenship. Maybe that's just how I feel about it. And I'm wondering how many people exactly say, no, I am moving to another country after getting citizenship. The next one, you're supposed to provide your criminal records because of course they're not trying to let criminals into their country. Marriage-based applicants are to provide their certified marriage certificate alongside spousal declaration, which should be sworn by commission of old solicitor or a peace commissioner, I think. For me, I got to submit my own form December 13, 2018. Bearing in mind that this was like close to the end of the year, so I was trying as much as possible to make sure that the year did not close with me holding on to those documents in my house. Now, being a marriage-based applicant, I only needed to stay for three years in the country to be able to apply for citizenship. Excuse me, dear. Say hi to my people. You look tired. You smell tired. Where was I? So, for me being a married based applicant, it took me three years to apply. So, my husband got his own passport, which I have been dangling here in 2017, November. And so, I just needed to calculate three years afterwards to be able to apply. So, since I had lived in the country, from 2015, 2016, 2017, after he got his own, I should have actually been able to claim for mine in 2018. Unfortunately for me, which is one of the mistakes that I will be stating here, after I had finished my contract in my last job in November 2017, I was so engrossed in work that it took the efforts of the HR to remind me to go on to um, change my stamp so that I could continue working in the country as a legal resident. And so I kind of missed out on two days because I had to leave work, go off to the immigration office, and it took me two days to eventually get that appointment. And so those two days, guys, cost me an entire year or close to an entire year. By the time I now got to be able to um, calculate my years to be able to um, my residency checker calculator, oh my god, English is so hard. But by the time I was able to calculate my residency checker calculator online, I found out that I needed to wait like close to another year. So instead of applying in 2018, I now had to wait till 2019 to apply for the passport or at least the end of 2018 to be able to apply. I should have actually applied like in April, July 2018, but because of that lapse, it cost me a couple of months and so that's something that you should take note of. By the time I got to submit my documents in December 2018, which was 13th December 2018, I tried as much as possible to make sure that those documents did not spend the end of the year with me. So eventually went out December 13, 2018. By January 30th, 2019, I had a trip to make to the UK. Unfortunately, my passport has still not arrived at this time. And so I put a call through to them in the naturalization office asking if there was any way they could please send me back my Nigerian passport so that I could make a trip. Because of course, that is where I have all my stamps and visas that allow me to travel and come back to the country. And the lady that I got to speak with was super kind enough to let me know that she could send me my passport the next day because according to the website, it states that you are supposed to submit your documents and it takes them about two weeks to just process that one before they send them back to you. So your passport goes out and of course it takes them only two weeks to send, you, send them back to you, thankfully. So the lady sent me back my passport. But one thing that I think facilitated my process was the conversation that I had with her because I got to understand the number of time that I could, I got to understand like what exactly, if there was any like documents missing in my own file and if there was anything missing that they needed me to send back to them or the number, like how long I have to wait before the procedure was going to be completed and so by the end of february 2018 they sent me back another form which was a letter stating that i could now submit two passport size photographs my gnib card which is the card that allows you to legally reside in the country alongside with a bleeding 950 euro which of course dug a very big hole in my pocket but i digress and then by the time i submitted that document end of april or sorry early april they sent me another letter stating that i could not participate in the naturalization ceremony guys when i saw that yellow letter in my house 
Hey, my heart just stopped for a minute because when you come from a country that has a weaker passport, sometimes it's just frustrating when you want to do some things. And then in this part of the world, if I decide to go to school, I have to pay like the entire fee for school. But thankfully now I could actually go back to school and pay half of the fee. So that's a huge blessing for me in my life. And I just cannot even repay that back with anything ever. But anyways, um, onto the naturalization ceremony. I undertake to faithfully observe. I undertake to faithfully observe the laws of the state. The laws of the state. And to respect its democratic values. And to respect its democratic values. So that took place in somewhere called Killarney, County Kerry in Ireland and it was a beautiful ceremony. I got to travel. It was a really long trip of about five hours in all. So from moving my, from my house to the hotel, it was five hours in all. So be prepared for the long trip. I guess it's be shorter if you're driving by yourself. I traveled out on a Sunday and the ceremony was on a Monday morning for me or Monday afternoon for me. I was the one o'clock batch yeah so there were like three batches for the day and i was part of the one o'clock batch um Kerry is a really beautiful place like for me that's like hands down the most beautiful place i have seen in ireland ever so if you have not made that trip yet i will highly recommend that place for you to go to there were lots of americans and germans who come there they say they come there for walks and they just love the scenery in the county really beautiful very different from what you see in dublin really really different so it's nice to travel around ireland and see different parts anyways i must say um so the ceremony got to take place and one thing that was not quite pleasing to see though at the ceremony was at some point people start, started to walk out after the oh, oh sorry after the after we got to swear the oath of allegiance to Ireland and sing the national anthem, people started to walk out. And for me, I just felt like it was pretty disrespectful. I just could not understand because I feel like if you probably go for your graduation ceremony, I mean, like this ceremony was, it says one hour, 45 minutes, but to be honest, I think it was like an hour or less. It wasn't so long, but at the end of it anyways, I got to take pictures. I had fun and um, yeah. It was quite a nice one to experience for myself and I'm just glad that right now I can actually send out for my passport. It takes about four to six weeks for the passport to eventually get back to um, the recipients or the applicants and this is for my husband. Of course he's already traveling but um, I can't wait for it to come to me and then we can start planning some other things to do with our lives but thank you guys so much for watching if you haven't subscribed yet hit that subscribe button that looks like a triangle turned pointing to the side and also like this video with that thumbs up button and let me know if you have any suggestions of what exactly you would like me to show on my channel i have a couple of ideas i have a lot of ideas the problem is time time is not on my side but anyways luckily now that the sun is out we should be able to do some other videos outside and show you some other beautiful parts of ireland not just inside my house so thank you guys so much for watching until i see you next time bye